Hello students, we are going to discuss about glycolysis. Okay, this topic glycolysis is coming under the chapter, 11th chapter, respiration in plants. Okay, this glycolysis which is also known as EMP pathway. Here, the word letter E indicate MDEN. The name of the scientist MDEN. M indicate Meyerhoff and P indicate Parnas. These three scientists were discovered this process called glycolysis. So glycolysis which is also known as EMP pathway. Okay. What exactly mean by glycolysis? Actually glycolysis is the conversion of one molecule of glucose into two molecules of pyruvic acid. How many molecules of pyruvic acid formed here? Two molecules were formed here. How many molecules of glucose we used here? One molecule. One molecule. So the conversion of one molecule of glucose into two molecules of pyruvic acid is called glycolysis. And this conversion is a process including 10 steps, nearly 10 steps. And all those steps we will we are going to discuss okay next i'm taking the process glycolysis okay we will discuss all the steps first of all glucose will convert into glucose 6 phosphate right in glucose 6 phosphate you can see one phosphate group at a sixth position and this phosphate group is given by atp and the ATP will convert into ADP. In ATP, there will be one adenine group and three phosphate. I will separately show. I will separately show here. ATP means there will be one adenine group and there will be three phosphate, which means adenine triphosphate, three phosphate groups. Okay, but ADP means one adenine and two phosphate group. Okay, this ATP or adenine triphosphate will give one phosphate group to the glucose and the glucose will convert into glucose 6-phosphate. Okay. So, here ATP will convert into ADP by use by losing one phosphate group. After that, glucose 6-phosphate will convert into fructose 6-phosphate. And this process is activated by the enzyme called isomerase enzyme. What is the name? Isomerase enzyme. And this conversion, which means the conversion of glucose into glucose 6-phosphate is activated by an enzyme called hexokinase enzyme. What is that? Hexokinase enzyme. It is, a, it is very important for your NEET exam. So, we discussed about hexokinase, then we discussed about isomerase enzyme. Next, I am taking next step that is the conversion of fructose 6-phosphate into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. In fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, you can see two phosphate group at the first and sixth position. But in fructose 6-phosphate, you can see only one phosphate group at the sixth, pos sixth position. Which means during this conversion, an extra phosphate is added. That phosphate group is given by ATP and this ATP will convert into ADP. Okay. Then after that, Fructose 1,6-bisphosphate will divide into two compounds. One is dihydroxyacetone 3-phosphate. Another one is glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. And these two compounds are interconvertible. These two compounds are interconvertible. Okay. Now, next, I am taking this glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate. This glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate will convert into 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate. In 1,3-bisphosphoglycerate, you can see two phosphate group at the first and third position, right? But in glyceraldehyde 3-phosphate, there will be a single phosphate at the third position, which means during this conversion, an extra phosphate is added. This phosphate is not given by ATP. This phosphate is given by an inorganic phosphate, okay? By this time, an NAD molecule NAD plus molecule will convert into NADH2 and this NADH2 will be equal to three molecules of ATP. 
that we will discuss later in detail okay then after that this 13 bisphosphoglycerate will convert into 3 phosphoglycerate in 3 phosphoglycerate you can see a single phosphate group at the third position but on this compound there will be two phosphate group at the first and third position which means during this conversion a phosphate group is released not used here phosphate group is released this released phosphate group is accepted by ADP and this ADP will convert into ATP ADP will convert into ATP okay next i am taking this 3 phosphoglycerate this will convert into another compound called 2 phosphoglycerate and this process will take place in the presence of an enzyme called phosphoglycerate mutase here we discussed about three enzyme one is hexokinase another one is isomerase enzyme and the third one is phosphoglycerate mutase enzyme okay after that 2 phosphoglycerate will convert into phosphoenol pyruvate and this also in the presence of an enzyme called enolase the fourth enzyme that is enolase enzyme okay and after that phosphoenol pyruvate will convert into pyruvic acid in phosphoenol pyruvate you can see one a single phosphate group but which is absent in pyruvic acid which means during this conversion a phosphate group is released this released phosphate group is accepted by ADP and this ADP will convert into ATP right so we formed here we can see the formation of pyruvic acid we know glycolysis means formation of two molecules of pyruvic acid here we got only one molecule of pyruvic acid right mm -hmm. this pyruvic acid is came from glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate we know fructose 1 6 bisphosphate will divide into two compounds one is dihydroxyacetone phosphate second one is glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate this glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate will give the first molecule of pyruvic acid after that this dihydroxyacetone 3 phosphate will convert into glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate which because these two are interconvertible and which will give second molecule of pyruvic acid so here you can see two cycles two cycles during the formation of two molecules of pyruvic acids okay so during one cycle there will be formation of one molecule uh, here one molecule and uh, here one molecule there will be two molecules of forming two uh, formation of two molecules of ATP in one cycle so during two cycles there will be formation of four molecules of ATP remember all those things okay next we are going to calculate how many molecules of ATP and NADH2 were formed during this reaction okay okay so we are taking the ATP number of molecules of so here we need to take how many molecules of ATP were formed and how many molecules of NADH2 were formed okay I am taking over the reaction here you can see formation of one molecule of ATP here and uh, another formation of ATP here another molecule of formation of ATP so two ATP right this is during one cycle we know there will be two cycles right so during two cycles there will be two into two into two ATP total there will be four ATP okay then next I am taking NADH2 here there will be formation of one molecule of NADH2 and this is during one cycle so during two cycles there will be formation of two molecules of NADH2 okay so how many molecules of ATP four molecule how many molecules of NADH2 two molecules we know that one molecule of NADH2 is equal to three molecules of ATP so two molecules of NADH2 will be equal to six molecules of ATP six molecules of ATP plus this two molecules of ATP will be equal to how many molecules of ATP so six molecules of ATP plus this four molecules of ATP total 10 ATP but you should remember that here we used two molecules of ATP here we used one molecule of ATP and uh, also 
here we used one molecule of ATP right so 10 minus 2 ATP 10 ATP minus 2 ATP will be equal to 8 molecules of ATP so in glycolysis there will be formation of total there, there will be formation of 8 molecules of ATP if they are asking separately then how many molecules of NADH2 2 molecules of NADH2 and uh, how many molecules of ATP how many molecules of ATP 2 molecules of ATP right okay how is 4 ATP sorry how is 2 ATP 4 ATP minus we used 2 ATP so 4 minus 2 there will be 2 ATP I'm repeating again or I'm separately writing how many molecules of NADH2 formed during glycolysis 2 molecules of NADH2 how many molecules of ATP formed 4 molecules formed out of that 4 we used 2 so remaining 2 molecules of ATP if you are converting everything in terms of ATP then 2 into 3 6 ATP 6 ATP plus this 2 ATP total there will be 8 ATP okay hope you understood the concept thanks for watching